This man was so dangerous the FBI kept him in solitary confinement, not for murder, not for terrorism, but because they believed he could start World War III with a phone call. His name was Kevin Mitnick, and by age 19, he had already hacked into the system controlling America's nuclear weapons. While other 12-year-olds played video games, Kevin discovered he could hijack phone networks with a serial box whistle. But free calls weren't enough. Kevin craved something more intoxicating, absolute power over the systems that ran the world. At 16, he infiltrated Digital Equipment Corporation, one of the world's largest tech companies. He didn't steal money or destroy files. He did something that terrified security experts far more. He proved their fortress was made of paper. While hackers relied on complex code, Kevin mastered social engineering. He'd call companies, impersonate employees, and charm his way past every security barrier. Within minutes, entire corporate networks would surrender their secrets. He didn't break down walls, he convinced people to hand him the keys. For over two years, America's most wanted hacker became a ghost. Fake identities, constant movement, always three steps ahead of federal agents. The FBI launched their most expensive manhunt in history, spending millions chasing shadows. But here's the terrifying part, Kevin never stopped. While running from the law, he continued hacking. He infiltrated the phone companies tracking him, stole cutting-edge software, and even eavesdropped on FBI communications about his own case. The hunter had become the hunted's eyes and ears. Media dubbed him, the condor. Wild stories spread, he could launch nuclear missiles by whistling, crash Wall Street with a keystroke, bring down the entire internet from a payphone. Truth mixed with myth until Kevin transcended reality. He wasn't just a hacker anymore, he was digital folklore. February 5th, 1995. Game over. FBI agents smashed down his apartment door in Raleigh, North Carolina. They found Kevin at his computer, fingers still dancing across keys that had once controlled America's deepest secrets. What happened next shocked the world. Authorities were so paralyzed by fear they treated Kevin like a nuclear weapon. Eight months in solitary confinement without trial. No phone access. Officials genuinely believed he could hack government systems through prison telephone lines. The man who conquered digital empires was defeated by four concrete walls. After four years of legal warfare, Kevin accepted defeat. Nearly five years behind bars for computer fraud. Time he'd already served in digital purgatory. But when Kevin walked free in 2000, something extraordinary happened. The world's most feared cybercriminal made the ultimate plot twist. He became the good guy. What exactly did he do? Check out our channel for more details documentary on Kevin.